their conditions were, were horrible. And the industry will also say, these are domestic animals. We've, we've kind of, we're, we're not doing hardly any trapping anymore. We, we've put these, brought these animals, domesticated them, and brought them on farms where they're being cared for like other farm animals are. Well, as you just saw with Nathan's example, that's not a very good argument when you start looking at how horribly these other farmed animals are treated. But um, to argue the point about whether they're domesticated, um, it's only been since 1930 that we've been bringing mink, fox, um, chinchillas into caged uh, environments where they're being factory farmed. And it certainly takes you know, thousands of years to domesticate animals. These animals are definitely wild. And I saw it with my own eyes. Um, and you've seen, probably seen video footage. And, and I want people um, after this talk to grab a, a DVD. We have video footage that we're giving away that shows some of these investigations and what is actually happening. Because the best way to really convince someone is to show them. This is what's really happening. These animals are running the wire. They're going crazy. They um, circle and pace. They um, mink, which are the, the vast majority of animals being raised for fur are mink. They are um, biting at themselves. There's been, invest there's been studies that have shown that they're developing ulcers. These are highly stressed animals. And uh, in the case of mink, they're living in cages usually about 10 inches by 24 inches. Very small, um, horrible cages. Their feces is piling up below their cages. In the case of, the, of Dan Ashelman, the fox farmer that I worked for, he was collecting their urine too, and he sold their urine as cover scent for hunters, that these hunters dab on fox urine like cologne when they go out into the woods to kill other animals to cover their scent. And so imagine five gallon buckets just filled with disgusting urine, um, encrusted cages with feces. These animals live like this all the time. And there are no laws protecting them. Um, in fact, when we went to go bust this Illinois fur farmer, it took us about a day of calling agencies to even find out what agency that, in the state of Illinois, none of these agencies even knew who regulated fur farms. They were all pointing the finger at each other. Finally, the state ag department did get involved and because we had such clear evidence of abuse, such as um, one animal, one fox who had her leg was caught in the back of the cage. She couldn't get to her food, and so she chewed her own foot off in order to get to the food in the front of her cage. None of this was noticed because it's all such an assembly line. Each individual animal is meaningless to them and, and are given no care at all that um, this animal went with an exposed bone, its whole limb chewed off, the foot was still stuck in the back of the cage when the um, ag department came in to investigate. He had not done anything to alleviate the suffering of this animal. And that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, these animals were not even getting adequate water because on a fur farm during the pelting season, um, the, the only reason I got in was because his only employee had just had a mild heart attack and he needed someone. So it was just, you know, luck that um, he was willing to hire some Omaha kid who was totally unfamiliar with the, the area and, um, and hired me to work for him. But um, because he was in the process of anally electrocuting these foxes, and that is how foxes are killed on fur farms, mink are usually killed by gassing or neck breaking, chinchillas are often killed by neck breaking or um, electrocuted with an electrode on their ear and um, their genitalia um, connected to another electrode. Just miserable lives, miserable ways that they're killed. Um, but he, he was so concerned about um, killing all these animals that he wasn't even giving them water. Like I had to make the most common sense argument um, when he said, oh, foxes don't need much water in the winter time. That was his argument for the fact that they were hardly getting any water. And of course, I was trying to get, get them water. But the problem was is that it took me like a half a day just to give every fox one little drink of water. And um, some of them were so crazy from being captive that they would chew on everything in their cage, including the little pl plastic cup where their water was kept. And so they would, when I would go to pour water into their cup that maybe only you know a quarter of an inch of it still um, held water, they would just go up as I was pouring and just 
try to lap up as much water as they could as it all poured out onto the ground where they couldn't get it. Um, and he's, he once told me, Dan Ashelman said, the first sign of dehydration in a fox is when they start bleeding out of their rectum. I mean, these foxes are lying there in their cages, bleeding and dying of dehydration, and that's, to him, one less fox he has to anally electrocute. So the, the argument that you have to take good care of these animals to get quality fur is completely bogus. Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, the foxes would sit there and watch as every next fox was anally electrocuted. He would be actually piling the dead bodies on top of the cages of the other living animals as they all watched in turn that they were going to be the next um, animal killed. It's unbelievable what's happening to these animals. And um, I have a handout over there. I can tell that my time's going to run short before I have a chance to go through everything. So I just I want to um, point out that there's a handout over there that kind of goes over some of the more basic facts of, of, uh, of uh, fur. And I encourage you to, to pick one up. Um, but I just want to say that um, in addition to the fur farms that are so abusive, we are still trapping animals for fur. And bobcats, coyotes, foxes, lynx, raccoons, wolves suffer and die in traps, as do companion animals who are, um, in, these traps are indiscriminate. And other animals, non-target animals, end up getting killed. And even though some, law, some states have laws about trap check requirements, there's no one watching over these people to see if they're even going out and checking their traps at all. So some of these animals are suffering um, horribly for long periods of times in these traps. Um, you've probably heard of the Canadian seal hunt. It's the largest slaughter of marine mammals on the ice fields in, in Canada. Uh, over 300,000 harp and hooded seals are killed for their pelts every year. And um, fur trim is a big deal right now. It's one of the ways the fur industry has um, kind of redesigned itself. Don't be fooled. Fur trim is not a byproduct. Um, now, at least, or nearly half of all the animals that are raised for fur are raised specifically just for fur trim, and people don't realize that. Um, when you go to, to, to fur demos, there's a lot of things you hear on the street. People will say, they'll look at your video footage and they'll say, oh, that's not from this fur farm or, oh, that's outdated video footage, or it's an isolated event. And there's some really powerful answers that we need to use when, the, when we're confronted with these questions about the video that we're showing. Number one, um, I like to say, show me the video footage of the humane fur farm. What does it even look like? I mean, are you talking about mink running around in an open enclosure, dying of natural causes, and having a huge <laughs> pond to swim in? I mean, what, we get our information from the industry itself. We look at their trade journals. That's how we find out how these animals live and die, because it's only at the retail end that they lie about it. When they're talking amongst themselves, they're very honest about how the animals are raised um, and how they're killed. And, um, and so you know, these videos that we show are exactly representations of industry-wide practices. Even when we busted this guy in Illinois, he was only given a few hundred dollar fine and things like anal electrocution were not even things that were, that's an industry practice that everyone uses. It's not even considered illegal. It was only like animals not getting water, animals outside being exposed to harsh temperatures with no shelter, um, deer who he was keeping for their urine, whose actually their, their hooves were getting caught into the wire and they were tearing their legs off inside of these boxes they were kept in. These were the kinds of things this uh, really egregious cruelty, he got a slap on the wrist and he's still in business.